Okay, we have here to take another integral on the board. We've got the integral from zero to 10, the fractional part of x dx. Okay, so to get started with this, there's really only one thing to deal with. We need to deal with this fractional part. How do we integrate that or how do we deal with that? So let's first just go over what this means to have a fractional part. If we take an example, like, let's just say we want the fractional part of 7.18. This is just gonna be 0 0.18. So just like it sounds, it always returns the fraction part or the decimal part of the number. And so also if we had something like, let's just say the fraction part of three, well, that's just gonna return zero because there is no fraction part or no decimal part. And one thing I wanna mention for this right now, we're just looking at problems where the X is gonna be greater than zero, just like our integral here, our bound start at zero. And that's gonna simplify things, but sometimes there's different definitions for the fractional part when X is less than zero. Now, one thing we can use on the fractional part for x greater than zero is this definition that the fractional part of x is just gonna be equal to x minus the floor of x. And, and I think that's pretty intuitive. Like we could use this first example here with this definition. So for the fractional part of 7.18, this is just gonna be the x value 7.18 minus the floor of 7.18, which is gonna round us down to seven. But if you do that, you get 0 0.18, which is what we have right here. So then let's just use this definition on the integral that we have. So what I can do is I can write this x minus the floor of x dx. But then from here, I can just take this and we can break this up into two integrals on the minus sign. So the first one is just gonna become this integral of x dx. And the second one, we are just gonna have, we're just gonna have the floor of x dx. Well, this here is gonna be real easy. This is just gonna be x squared over two using power rule evaluated from zero to 10. And then here for the floor function, what I can do is break this up into 10 separate integrals. If I break it up onto integers, this is just gonna become a number. So I can rewrite this like this. But now back to this first piece, we can just evaluate this. When we plug in zero, that's gonna be nothing. So we plug in 10, we get 10 squared, which is 100 over two. This first piece is just 50. Now for all this stuff over here, each one of these is gonna reduce. Like between zero and one, the floor is gonna round us down to the next highest integer, so that's just gonna become a zero right there. Doing the same thing here from one to two. Everything's gonna be between one and two, so the floor is gonna take us, it's gonna round us down to one. And this is gonna be the same exact thing for all these. This one's gonna round us down to two, and this is just gonna keep going all the way to 10. But now here we're integrating zero, so this term's gonna go away. But now really all these integrals here are the same because we just have constants here that we can bring outside. And so if we look at every single integral as one, every single one of these is gonna to integrate to x and it's gonna evaluate from these integer points, but the difference is always one because we set it up that way. So this is gonna to evaluate to b minus a. And so all of them are just gonna be one. So if the value of every integral is gonna be one with just the constant multiple in front of it, then we can just write this out and kind of eliminate all the integrals and just write this as 50 minus, the first one's just gonna be one, the second one's gonna be two, the third one's gonna be three, and this is gonna continue all the way to this last value, which is just nine. So now to finish it off, all we need to do, if we could just add up all the numbers from one to nine, subtract it from 50, we have our answer, but we actually don't have to add this up as this is actually the sum of the first n integers. We have a formula for this, which is just n times n plus one all over two, where in this case, the n's gonna be this value, so our n's gonna be equal to nine. So to calculate this, we just need nine times 10 over two. And so let's just calculate this. We bring down this 50 and we have 50 minus here, we get 90 divided by two, so minus 45. And so for our final solution of this, we get just five. Okay, so that wasn't too bad, but there is kind of a shortcut to this. If you just look at a graph of this, so you just notice that our area under the curve for this, it's gonna be the same from zero to one, one to two, two to three. So what I can actually do is just rewrite this whole integral. All we really need to do is just evaluate this from zero to one, and we just need 10 copies of it. So we just need to evaluate zero to one, fractional part of x. And now you could actually just calculate this from the graph, find the area from zero to one, just half base times height, and then multiply it by 10. But actually let's just do this out using this formula here, because this is just gonna turn into 10, and then this piece is gonna be x, and then we'll distribute it in here, 10, zero to one of the floor of X. But this right here, we actually did earlier between zero and one, the floor is gonna take us down to zero. So this right here actually becomes zero. So this whole part of it goes away. 
So all we need to do is integrate with power rule from zero to one, we get x squared over two, and this is gonna be times 10, just evaluating from zero to one, but we don't care about zero because that's just zero. So plugging in one, we get 10 times one half, or just five. Okay, there you have it. Interesting look at the fractional part. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.